Hello there, my name is Miss Kaylin Nunes from Belize Brain Awareness Society. I am simply here to give one of our very valuable and appreciative member a treat that was given to us graciously by Grace Products. I am not sure if you've realized, but sometimes in life, everything seems to be going really good and then with one incident or illness your life come crashing down but if you are able to pick yourself up and realize that the past is behind you and does not define you you will be of great influence to your community this is the story of a Belizean woman who survived the double brain aneurysm seizure and surgeries. We get to know how her traumatic experience affected her life and how she's managed to pick herself up to become a brain health awareness advocate in Belize. It is my hope that this video will serve as a motivation to anyone who's experienced setbacks in life and to help project Belize Brain Awareness Society to the world in order to appeal to donors in support of their worthy cause. This is her story. My name is Kalia Nunes and I am a two-time brain aneurysm survivor. I am a full-time primary educator and I also am an executive director for Belize Brain Awareness Society. Well, was living the ordinary 20-year-old life, party, hang out, staying out late, enjoying life, working of course, because I was working since I was 18, but, um, but just basically living life and not worrying about tomorrow, not caring about illness, because I felt I was young and just had enough time on my hands. So for me, I was just simply living at 23, 24 year old, young girl lifestyle at that time before I got sick, right? So um, I always was a very ambitious person because I was volunteering in teaching since I was 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 and 17. So I always knew what I wanted to do, but my focus era was what was my, what I was battling with at those time, no? Because I believe that teaching was it for me. At our work, we had sports day for our students. And I remember I was really rallied up and I got the swooping headache, like, you know, like when your breeze just come and swoop. And I told one of my coworkers, I said, girl, I have this terrible headache, it just passed me. And she said, girl, they said, just sit down, drink some water, take care of yourself, okay. I did not know that that was the sign that I had aneurysm. So aneurysm is whereby like it's like this bump that it grows on your vein in your head because it's brain aneurysm. You can have it any part of your body and then it grows and grows and grows. What happened, my one was growing as I was getting older. So um, two weeks later I was doing lesson plan for work. And while I was doing lesson plan, I, um, I felt this terrible headache came again and I heard something in my head gone, bam. So when that burst, when I heard that noise, I immediately collapsed back on the floor. I couldn't really walk, talk, nursey. I was like crawling on the ground asking because I lived with a roommate and at that time and I was um, saying help but in a softer tone than what people know me as like how I'm talking right now. I also had cold sweat, some big droplets falling out of my skin and my pores I could have felt it open up. And when um, that happened, 
they called the ambulance and the ambulance i remember the lady was stopping me on my hand and on my leg and she asked miss what happened we can't move if we don't know what happened and i all i could have said i said my head my my head but wasn't saying it loud enough for her to hear and she said miss another here are you i said my head it took me into the in the ambulance and um i was then um treated at for migraine and then um following that um my dad then took me to the clinic the following day because i still wasn't coming out of my room and my mom said that is strange i wasn't eating and it was then they treated me for headache and the third day my mom decided that i need to go and see a neurologist because it was my head by the time i reached to my mom i stopped walking i stopped talking i you could have completely felt that like that was already becoming on you and i couldn't have walked i couldn't have done anything but my body was at peace i really felt how the, the pain that i had was real like it was swooping away and after the doctor did the brain cat scan he told my mom and it was only us in the doctor's room he told my mom he said um I, miss we have bad news your daughter have been bleeding in her head from since the day that she fell ill he said it has not been addressed so um it's getting worse and that's the reason why i know she's non responsive but i could have heard everything but i couldn't have responded or done anything back at all and um but i was answering my mom and the doctor within myself and um i heard when my mom screamed out and um the doctor said i had 15 minutes to get on the machine because or else i will die because i have been bleeding in my head for a while now and it has not been addressed at that moment miss nunez had been bleeding in her brain for the past 3 days without anybody's knowledge how did it go from there yes i was in the hospital for a couple of weeks i did manage to get better i came out i couldn't have walked i was talking but slurpy so i was struggling my words so more you would feel like i was a special needs person i needed my mom for everything and um even eating even to change my clothes or take care of me but um i got better i got really really better you have to learn to walk back that was my main challenge i will always tell you that my main challenge is just walking i i have that um my mobility gives it, it locks me down completely and then i had to do therapy my mom wanted to have been a nurse so she started to use some of the techniques that she had learned with me such as rolling your foot on on paint bottle you know taking a walk around the house every so often you know and um and i got stronger and i got stronger and i went right back to work i was living in belize and i decided to let me transfer out of belize because of the noise and um i i reach a point when you're when you're finished having an aneurysm i don't know if anyone know it but the the your head feels different it's not the same like before so the noise you hear it becomes annoying to the point whereby you you feel like you're going insane you you the all kind of stuff and i live beside a very noisy home so what i did was moved out of the city because i was telling my neurologist dr sosa and he said you know what if it's best for you best you move out of the out of the city and you find somewhere calmer and cooler he said because you do not know if this thing will strike again be reminded i did not do any surgery at the first time Miss Nunes got better and life in Belmopan was going smooth but after 3 years brain aneurysm strikes again I was eating a burger and and I felt this swooping headache again and I said god please not tell me that's the same thing like the first time and then I heard pow in my head just visualize this my phone was on the counter i was sitting in the chair 
and then when normally you have a bloat like that in your head you cannot see at least for a while so i tried to feel where the phone was again my pores open up and these big droplets of water came out and i couldn't walk well you know instantly once it's your head it shudders everything that we know so instantly i um couldn't have walked but i tried to feel for the um for the phone on the center table and i couldn't have seen it but i know the dynamics of my phone and i and i used it at that time and i called the last person that came for me which was my taxi man because i didn't have a car and i told my taxi man i said one word i said help help and he came and he saw me halfway in my house and halfway on the veranda because I managed to just swoop up a little to open the door because I said I don't want to just die and no one see me right if that is the case and when the taxi man came he, he said Kayla what happened and he hurried care me to the hospital and I went to the hospital and I vomited out the whole emergency room because aneurysm like it, it it causes you, it gives you a lot of nausea, a nausea. And I was vomiting, vomiting, and vomiting. They had to rush me down from Belmopan down to Belize City. And they did an, another emergency brain cut scan for me. And what they found out from that emergency brain cut scan is that I, I had another brain aneurysm. And from that, other brain aneurysm um, I had to be hospitalized again I um, I was very much depressed because you don't see yourself as in that way or in that position when you're in your 20s you don't see your, being an independent person you don't see yourself being so dependent you know the last time my mom probably saw me naked I almost say two three years old when she made a bed me but um she has to see you naked now because she has to bathe you feed you clean you and then you're you are thinking all along that these things gonna happen to elderly people and then you're like watch how you are in your 20s the ages when you're to have your children and family and living life on the edge and no but in my 20s it taught me so much of a lesson of being careful and you're getting sick and and um get your get your health in order before you do anything like that and so my um my second illness it opened my eye even more and even further than the first illness In the middle of her internship and requiring an urgent medical examination and brain surgery, Miss Nunes struggled to come up with the funds to save her own life. However, she was directed to the Belize Ministry of Health by a stranger when she was trying to sell her possessions and they came to her rescue. Um, I finished my internship and I got an A. A couple of days when I was finished with it, I got a call from Ministry of Health saying that I was granted the surgery in Cuba. And I remember I fell to the ground and I was so happy. And I told my students, I said, man, this was what I was waiting for. It's like was God was just waiting for me to finish internship, for me to go and buy. Then I would just don't get the paper whereby if I did not finish internship that same year, I would have been released from teaching. And it was, I finished that internship with my illnesses and I went and I did my brain and my brain surgeries in Cuba. In Cuba, my stepmom was there. She was this, this person I needed at that moment in time because I was scared, I was depressed. A lot of mental states are good state you're going through because not only are you young you don't have you don't have any kids yet you don't you don't know where your life will and then you're looking at yourself through this glass mirror and you're saying my goodness like look at how i am 
and while other 20 year olds are living their life enjoying you're here with this major illness you didn't even know what it was and you have to make sure this is addressed before you can actually live your life and the surgery was actually like 13 hours As if going through a 13-hour complicated brain procedure in an unfamiliar territory and trying to find her bearings at such a young age wasn't enough. Miss Nunes was told by the doctor to go through it all over again in order to achieve a satisfactory result. Then afterwards, I was released to go back into my room with my stepmom there and um, whereby she was looking after me and caring for me there now. And the doctor came and the doctor said, Miss, you have to do another brain surgery. Uh, then was when I got really frantic. I started to cry and she said, and she said, stay and do it. And I started to oh, reel up. I started, why I have to do the surgery? They said they only covered 90% of the brain first. And I started to cry. I didn't want it to go back through that because the, after the first surgery, it knocked off this ear. So I can't hear out this ear. So I was like, I'm coming back disfigured and I have to go back and do another surgery. Call the doctor for the doctor to tell me, me stay there, honey. In Cuba, you could get this surgery completely now. You are already there, get it done and get it over with. The second surgery, I wasn't sleeping. I was fully awake and I knew everything that was taking place in my body. It took one hour. They were just making sure that you could have done everything. I guess it's because they, after the first one, they they saw that I couldn't have hair. They wanted to make sure. So they they wanted you to do certain things that to show that okay you're still functioning. They didn't touch that nerve or they didn't touch that part. My name is Andrew Nunes. I am the father of Kayla Nunes, and I am a retired firefighter with the Belize National Fire Service. And I felt down, you know, I was withdrawn. I was wondering how a young, energetic child could have gotten to this stage. You know, I prayed to God and asked him for his assistance. After such an ordeal, what made Miss Nunes decide to start the Belize Brain Awareness Society? Well, I came back. I, I told God, I made a promise to God and I said, you know, when I was there at that hospital, I said, I wanted to do something like this back home in Belize. But wasn't that strong enough for me yet. Um, I had to go to the bank with my mom. While I was in Belize today, going at Heritage Bank on Albert Street, my mom had to hold me up and if i remember i felt bad for her because i'm not a skinny person i'm not big and fat either but i know that i'm a weighty person no it's not like a three-year-old child that you will have and people were looking at my mom like my goodness watch how that lady hold up this big yeah like and I remember I felt so bad and I said, my goodness, people don't know sickness. And that was whereby I said I needed to make them aware that people are sick out here and it doesn't matter how old you are, you will need someone, especially your parents. So in 2018, I decided to create and launch the organization called Belize Brain Awareness Society. What this do now is to make others aware of any sort of neurological illness that they have, make them even aware of autism spectrum disorders and also aware of mental health illnesses. The reason why is because if I knew then what I know now, I could have saved myself much better but I didn't and I'm so glad I didn't pass away from that, those situations either. I'm glad it made me out to be someone to educate and spread awareness to others about this is what can happen to you. 
and what ha what is the strange part is that we neglect this every day the same thing that allows us to move our hands and walk and talk and do everything and we neglect it and what happened when we neglect it is that it's getting sick and how we take care of this is what we eat getting our checkups regularly taking care of ourselves and um some of those things um were what i was not checking up on like i did all the tests in the world but never did a brain cat scan even though i had a lot of headaches never knew about what a neurologist was never heard the name aneurysm in my life so when i tell you that i am i was completely lost about everything i was clueless however i became knowledgeable i got to know a young lady who had aneurysm like myself she was lost she didn't know what to do and this was where what this was the start of the reason why i created the organization and she was lost and i me and her became so close and i told her my process and she went to do it and you know the thing with it she did not got her second one because after the first one she got her first surgery so what are some of the achievements of Belize Brain Awareness Society and what are the plans for the future? A lot of members have gotten a lot of assistance. Um, I can clearly remember Amelia Rush case. She was a little girl who they found, they saw that she got blind and someone from her community saw, came to us, they were fragile, like what happened? Get to find out she had a brain, a benign brain tumor. We tried, we tried, they got in contact with this lady from the Boston um, Children's Hospital and we, we worked that through and um, yeah, Amelia did her surgery and Amelia is back in Belize but she lives in PG area and she is blind. But recently we did an update with her on our Facebook page. So that is a story that, that touched me. You know, we have some stories whereby, yes, some of them have passed away, but they were given a lot of medical assistance. We have Dariana. Ah, uh, Dariana lived a very a while with um, shunt visually impaired. She have hydrocephalus. She had a lot of complications, but she lived up to five years old because we, we helped her, we made sure she got certain things done. And, um, and we were right there with her, even when she closed her eye, her mom would say that the association was right there. So that is whereby we're at at this moment. We do not have any grant, we do not have any big proposal, no big money stash, nowhere. It's just common people with common goals, common interests whereby we want to see that certain things get done and accomplished. One of our big aim is creating a brain center. Um, that is something that I'm even working on starting from this year. I really want to create this brain center whereby people don't have to go to these private hospitals and pay so much from an association if people are helping and people are donating and contributing and we get all these stuff donated it will help us to give these people more assistance and help we're doing it with the little that we have now imagine it with more they can reach us on our facebook page belize brain awareness society they can reach us also on our Instagram, BZ Brain Awareness underscore Society. And um, they can ca call us at 614-5055. And WhatsApp, that's uh, also our regular number and our WhatsApp number. And they can also email us at Brain Awareness Society, BZE at gmail.com. One thing I want to tell people. If you're having any problems surrounding your brain, if you're having any problems surrounding your brain, 
please, please just reach out to us or any neurologist, nearest neurologist, and get it checked out because it's not easy to leave anything pertaining to the brain. And um, listen to your body. You need to listen to your body. Like for me, I was warned by the same body that allowed me to get sick. Listen to your body and your body will tell you exactly what is taking place and as you have that sense that something is happening go and get it sorted out immediately don't wait until it's too late i just would i would like to appeal to the general public you know to try to help the organization as it is as it is going you know and there are a lot of people that there are in need you know, and we are trying to do the best that we have with the little that we have. But anybody who can help, you know, it more, we would gladly appreciate it. I have always said that Belize is a paradise, but it is only a paradise when you can afford it. In my time in Belize, I have witnessed people struggle to afford three square meal not to mention money in treating terminal illness like brain aneurysm. If you are still watching this video, may God bless you. It means humanity is important to you. If you are touched by this video, please reach out to Miss Nunes and Belize Brain Awareness Society on the contacts provided to support their worthy cause. May God richly bless you.